Hey folks, and welcome to the Stylus Rumble tutorial series. We sort of have a name now. And by we, I mean me. Is it weird that I talk about myself in the third person? Maybe I can pretend I have a staff, just like off to the side. Hello guys. So just pretend I said that in all the previous videos, because I'm not going to go back and record it. This episode is going to be a little bit like a bits and bytes episode. It's going to be a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Because I want to talk about some of these special modules that we're going to be using rigging a lot. And just some little shortcuts that will make your life easier. One thing is I have two node libraries or module libraries if you're using an older version. It's the easiest way to paste modules that you like into your favorites library. If I'm a big fan of an apply image transformation then I can just bip drag and drop it in there. And then you can close your second library or you can keep it there. Sometimes I like to have more than one node view if I want to center on this in one node view and then in my other node view I could focus on something else if I want to easier copy paste or something like that. Most of the time I keep my library down here. Obviously this is not the default layout. I really want you to take advantage of the utility of this interface because you can customize it to whatever suits your needs. Um, so let's talk about our preferences for a second. First of all you've got your shortcuts right away. So if you're ever using something a lot, I want you to just take the time, figure out what the shortcut is so we can search by the name and say we're making a lot of ellipses. If you know how to spell what it is you're looking for, you can type it into the box. So I'm looking up the ellipse tool. This is one thing I really like to have on a hotkey. Here I have it set to N. I don't remember what that replaced, but it's not something I ever used. The way that I prefer to rig and want is to use ellipses to be able to see my pivot points more clearly and using ellipses to get clean rotations. That'll make sense once we start doing it, but you, you might consider putting that on a hotkey. Um, another one is flip horizontal and flip vertical for the drawings. If four and five are already flipped for your transformation tool. You can uh, add it here and I'll press four and it'll say that it's already used as flip horizontal and it'll give you an, a, a full list of the things that it's doing but you can duplicate it and it'll do the same thing for both tools so flip horizontal and flip vertical in the drawing mode and ellipse those are three that I would recommend adding hotkeys to and then of course if you are using something a lot look up what it is so if you're using say the pencil tool a lot just come in here and check out what the pencil tool is in your hotkeys and that way you can force yourself to use it whenever you're using that tool. Write it on a post-it note and stick it on your desk and over time you'll just memorize it and that way you'll have a much faster workflow. I cannot emphasize enough how much better it is to know your hotkeys than to constantly be searching through your menus or asking the person next to you what the hotkey is. The next tab is the general tab and stop motion keyframes. This is one that I'm constantly turning on and off so it's good to know where that is depending on what you're doing if you're animating or not but the most important one here is the focus on mouse enter general tab options and it's the very first one it might be in a different place if you're using an older version of harmony but it's within the general tab i think it's down here in the older version i don't have it installed to show you it's called focus on mouse enter and let me just show you so right now you can see this red box around my screen and if i move my cursor around it's just going to pop back and forth to wherever my mouse is if i go back to the preferences and i turn that off now i have to click i have to click into the window before it will switch which one i'm actively using and i think that's the most irritating thing in the world so focus on mouse enter you can just jump around like this and you don't have to click in here and then you accidentally double click and you deselect your selection and you can't undo to select in your camera tab select tool works on single drawing so under tools slide down here select tool works on single drawing if you have that unchecked your select tool works more like a flash style or you can select multiple drawings with the select tool but what I find is rather than being really useful that just makes you select things you don't want to but I mean, that's a preference really so uh, just be aware that that's there and in older versions this is automatically checked off so your select tool will work on multiple drawings and I always found that really bothersome. Under your advanced tab uh, we should already have our overlay and underlay arts on. I have almost all of these on except element mode animate using animation tools if you turn this one off that means that our d our drawings will come in by default unable to be animated with our drawing with our animation tools that's really useful unless you're animating on your drawings which i wouldn't recommend 
So that's it for the preferences that I suggest. Go through them. That's a lot of wearing a software is just spending the time to go through all those menus and see what some of that stuff does. The next thing I want you to do is a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it's going to save you a bajillion hours. So I want you to go to the Google and I want you to type in Harmony Find and Replace Script. Just type that straight in there. And the very first thing that pops up it's going to be find and replace script on the Toon Boom forums. Boop. And it's going to send you back to this six-year-old blog post. Well, almost six years. Five-year-old blog post. And this wonderful human, Marcus78, posted a find and replace script. You can just copy all this. Copy. And then come in here. Go to your Windows script editor. And you can say I've already added a find and replace. Up here, file, new script. Name of new script, find and replace. I'll just write some garbage. And then you can paste your beautiful script in here. Save it, verify it, all this stuff. And uh, then you'll have to add it. Once you've saved it into your script editor, you can right click in your node view, go to customize, and then you'll be able to find it. See, find and replace drawings. It's got a little cog wheel because it doesn't have any fancy thing and then you have to find it in this god-awful unsearchable list of scripts oftentimes it's right below this squiggly boob thing but sometimes you have to do a little bit more digging and this is going to save you about a bajillion hours of your life i just I can't even i love you marcus 78 <laughs> whoever you are i've been using this for years and it's just it's so good most Anybody who's used software before knows Find and Replace is like a default. It comes with word processors, but for some reason Harmony doesn't have one, but this lovely human has created it for us. Thank you, Marcus78. Um, along with this new Find and Replace script, what I have is a selection of different templates. The first one I have, boop, is just a peg and a drawing. And it's ASD capital, so now I can put ASD because it's like the easiest thing to type ever. And I can write the prefix of whatever I need it to be. So say it's a prop, it might be PR for prop. And the only thing with this find and replace is you have to undo each one separately. So you can see I undid that one, undid that one. So if you name a ton of stuff, because I also have a character template, this big guy... So this has ASD on every single one of these guys. So if I needed to undo that, it's gonna be really difficult. It's much easier to use the find and replace script twice. So now I've selected this whole thing, find and replace script, ASD. Say I say I want it to be CH and I accidentally hit CHH, okay? So now I've named all these things CHH. The easiest way to fix it is to use your find and replace again, CHH, and actually type it incorrectly. H, okay, and it'll replace that name. If you name it something really uh, that's used frequently though, like EL, then you might just end up with an ugly prefix rather than trying to fix it all. So try, try and do it right, but <laughs> you can fix it if you, uh, if you mess it up. So I've got this guy and I've also got one without a prefix. So it's just ASDF and I can call it hat or whatever I need to add to my template because here I've got this big thing with a whole pile of stuff, but depending on the model, like right now I just have two hair on the front and two hair on the back. If it's a really elaborate character, it might need 50 pieces of hair. So rather than adding a drawing by coming down here and saying, oh, I need a new drawing. Now I have to draw, I'm going to name it something useful, add, and then doing that a million times. Instead of doing that, I can drag in my pre-made thing. My peg is already set up exactly the way I want. The drawing is set up exactly the way I want with all my favorite settings. And then I can add it to rig just like that. So it's all set up, name the way I want, preferences the way I want, and I can just use my find and replace script, ASDF, and call it hair five or hair six, whatever I need it to be. And I can haul in a bunch of these, and it'll automatically just add a two, three, four, five, and name them in a civilized way. That way I'm adding tons of stuff, all set up properly, don't have to worry about the preferences, and I can just name them all. I can just rename all of them at the one time, hair. Now I've got a whole pile of hair. So much faster, so much faster. I've gone to studios where they don't have a template at all. They just 
they need a character, so they create this whole thing from scratch. Don't do that. Find this nifty find and replace thing, create yourself a template, save yourself a ton of time. So you've got your preferences all worked out, you've got your templates. Next thing we're talking about, some of these fancy guys up here. So we're gonna look at the cutter. Boop. We're gonna look at the layer selector. Like after drawing peg comp, these are your bread and butter. Love these guys. In a previous video about drawings, I told you that in here you can affect the art layers. You can turn them on and off and determine what's being shown. That's a really unstudio friendly way to do it. A better way is to use a layer selector. If you want, say, just line art, they do have a line art, color art, overlay art. Here we have them side by side. This is the line art, and it just has this bottom chunk because it's automatically going to choose the line art. Right now our layer selector is line art, color art. We can change these to whatever layers we want. So we just want overlay, underlay. We just want overlay, color art. And that'll be, we just put it in between here. You hold alt and squeaker in. You just hold it, poke it in there. And now this is only gonna poop out overlay and color art information. It's gonna block the line over and underlay art. So you can use these specialized ones, but I prefer the layer selector just because I changed my mind. You can even have a template, boop through the magic of television, I've created one for each layer. And we can create a template of that. We go down to our folder and you can see there's a little lock here. We right click, right to modify, and that'll take the lock off. So right click this, you can turn off right to modify. Don't forget it's there, <laughs> right to modify. Copy this, paste it in here. We'll call it our layer selectors. And now every time we need layer selectors, we drag in our layer selectors. So at the beginning of a rig, I like to grab my character template, just the whole character template like this. And I like to grab my layer selectors. And now as I'm going through my template, whenever I need a layer selector, I have one pre-made. And if I need an overlay underlay, I'll rename it overlay underlay and I'll just turn on my underlay layer, and now I've got an overlay underlay as well. I've already got some stuff in here that I know I'm gonna be using every single time. There you can see some dark blue modules, cutters, color. We're gonna get into that when we start rigging. If you're working on designing the rig for a show, what you would do is take this base rig and then add the bells and whistles that are used for every single character that you can do before it's made. Um, there's some stuff like deformers that you, it, it's much better to make them once the character's art is involved. But for the most part, if you know that your character rig's all gonna be laid out the same way, you create your character rig, you add as many extra bells and whistles as you need. Say everybody's wearing a hat, so you'd add your hat in. Then you save your character template out into a folder and as many riggers as you have working for you, they can all grab the exact same template and it's laid out exactly the same way. This is ideal on a production because if you have 10 or 20 animators working on the same rigs and they need to get in here to like work on the arms or something, it's if they can have an idea where it is and how it's set up, then it's a lot less stress and bother for them to work with and fix stuff. And then if they break something, it's much easier for you to fix if you have a consistent rig throughout your show. That's a lot on layer selectors. We're gonna shove these aside. The other thing I want to talk about is the cutter. And the cutter is just a mask. It has two in boxes and it has one out box. So the way the cutter works, this little one on the right, it has a dot on it. And basically try and remember that the picture with the dot on it is going to display visual information. So I'm going to sneak that in here and you can see my letter B is going through the picture side and pooping out the letter B. If I plug the letter C, into the other side, boop, it's going to cut the letter B. And it's not actually over it. If I remove this, you can see that it's it's actually taking a chunk out and you're just using this as a mask. Uh, within the cutter options, the only option is inverted. If we invert it, you can see that now the B is only being displayed through the C. It's exactly like a layer mask if you're used to using uh, Photoshop. It's just being done with a module. So you can plug anything in here. You can, oops. You can plug the A in there instead, and now the B is only being displayed through there. Inverted, and now the A is cutting up. You can also use your composite to use your A and your C. Now both of them are being used as cutters. And you can see they be animated however you want. And you can use your composite over here so that your C and your B are being cut by your A. So that's a little quick overview of the cutter. We are gonna be using the cutter a lot 
And the number one thing I find with people in cutters is they always forget which one is the one that you're going to see. And that's the little dot box. Dot box will get pooped out. And then no dot box. This guy, he's the cut. He's going to cut the thing. And then inverted, it's going to cut a chunk out. And if it is inverted, it's going to act like a spyglass. Okay. So we're doing lots of stuff with that. But it will, I promise, it'll take like 400 tries before you remember which one of these stupid boxes is the right one. And even then you'll put it in the wrong one sometimes. And you'll be like, is it this way? Or is it, no, is it this way? Inverted? Not inverted. In, in not inverted? Wait, which one? That was the first year of my life working on this program. <laughs> I think that's everything you need to get kind of set up and squared away. I mean, there are tons of modules, uh, so you know, don't don't be shy about playing around with them. So if you have any questions in particular about the the things that I've covered or any of the modules that you'd like me to go over in particular, please leave a message down below or tweet me or whatever that kids do nowadays. If you know somebody who needs to learn a little bit more about Harmony, please share, like, subscribe, and all those things that internet people ask you to do. Thanks for dropping by and I'll see you in the next video.